Hey everyone, and uh, welcome to Authentic Work, our podcast and live stream all about building online businesses, side hustles, and everything in between. Each week we, dry, we dive into how you can start building that online business or side hustle with purpose and authenticity through conversations with independent business owners, creators, side hustlers, and in exploring cool tools along the way. Uh, I'm Rob from Hey Summit, and today I'm excited to have Sarah Spencer on the show. Uh, Sarah is a singer songwriter who's turned her blog Song Fancy into an income generating side business. Song Fancy helps beginning female songwriters with their craft, creative mindset, and connections with other artists. Today, Song Fancy is a community that's thousands strong with writers from all over the world. Sarah's joining us to talk about how to build an engaged community for your passion based business. Sarah, thank you so much for coming on and, and welcome. Thank you. What a great intro. Thank you for having me. I, well, so just to start off, I'd love to hear the story, how how did Song Fancy start to what sounds like avalanche and build up into, into what it is today? That's a good word to describe it. It definitely avalanched. It snowballed into like, what else can I do? A better word. <laughs> better word. <laughs> <laughs> um, I started Song Fancy um, admittedly kind of just selfishly because I wanted to start a blog. Like I've been a graphic designer for 10 years now. Um, I was working in graphic design in Nashville, had just moved there, um, almost directly out of college. It was a few years after I graduated that I actually said, you know, I'm going to start this blog. And I started just like telling stories being in Nashville, like being a female singer, songwriter, indie artist in Nashville. And, you know, that was my perspective. And that was pretty much it. I just kind of talked about what happened in my life. And eventually as time went on and I started learning more about running a blog and running an online business and seeing what other people were doing and just kind of learning everything that I could, I realized like not only could this actually be kind of a side hustle for me, this could bring me some income, um, but it changed into me talking about me and me sharing for other people who were maybe in my position a few years earlier. So, so what about it? What, what about it told you, oh, actually, this might be something that I can make some income with? Yeah. Um, somebody asked me this exact question a little while ago, and I totally have to credit like like podcasts that I was listening to, podcasts and blogs I was reading. And I wish I could remember everybody that I was listening to back then. But Pat Flynn was a major influence. I learned what passive income was from Pat Flynn. Um, he was definitely a major influence in like, okay, and I'm learning the difference between like, writing long form content versus short blog posts, how frequently you should write them, learning about SEO and all of that put together, I started to realize, oh, okay, I see you set it up and this is how it can generate some income. And this is where you come from in your, your own perspective and what you're sharing and how to make the most impact for other people, which also can generate income. Um, I was like constantly trying different things and learning yeah. as much as I could. I still do that. Like it's, it's, Kind of addictive <laughs> learning what's out there and what you can do and and um, it's interesting because when you started out started out it was very much about you and your experience and it was your it sounds like it's like just another outlet like your music right um, um but then that kind of grows into your your experience is is seemingly being valuable to other people what then takes you on to that next step of creating a community for those people rather than simply just creating more content yourself? Yeah, that's such a great question. It took me a few years to get to that point where I realized, oh, okay. Because I mean, I, didn't, I never considered a community. As far as I knew, like in the early days of Song Fancy, putting content out there and gathering email signups was a community. And I guess technically it can be, but there's no conversation or anything really. Um, you know, at one point I took comments off of my blog because it was too much to maintain and it really wasn't adding anything to an experience. So I, I didn't really consider a community until I started hearing about Facebook groups and really great results and really great, just fun times and connections that people were having inside of Facebook groups. Um, and it was around that time, you know, get the gears turning, like, Ooh, can I try this? Like, what would that mean? What would that look like? Mm -hmm. Um, I started to think about what a Facebook group could be about. I started one Facebook group was literally just a general song fancy Facebook group with like daily threads, like Mondays are work tape days and Tuesdays are co-writer day. Like it was so lame. No one like wanted to engage. It wasn't serving anybody and all it was doing was just like making more work for me. Um, archived that group and eventually, eventually really figured out like, 
how can I actually serve people? How can I actually get people excited and engaged and using this group in a way that's fulfilling to them, but also to me, so I don't just, you know, burn out doing Facebook posts every day. Um, and came up with the five and five song challenge. So it's a songwriting challenge where every day we write a song for five days and it's a sprint and it kicks your butt and it gets a lot of beginning hobbyist writers into a more professional pace so they can kind of see what that's like if they're more career minded. Um, and then advanced writers or people who've been writing forever can get that kick in the butt if they're just having a lot of writer's block or in a creative lull and need something different. Uh, so I, I, I uh, and I said this in the intro, but I find it really interesting the way that song fancy, like what what the what the descriptor is, that it helps beginning female songwriters with their craft, their creative mindset, and connections with other artists. That sounds very clear, um, but it also is is kind of laying down the the um, the goalposts in terms of where the community starts and and where maybe it doesn't go. Um, and, and and oftentimes when you're when you're starting out and when you start um, you start off with that passion maybe you're really really passionate about one group of people and trying to help that group of people you identify it with, uh, with it a lot and then there's this temptation to broaden it out and to maybe make it a little bit more broad maybe to, to increase the impact that you might be having um, with other people um, how do you balance that temptation and and uh, you know not making it too niche but then again, also not making it too broad. How do you think about that? Oh my God, these questions are so good. Um, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. With niching too much, um, it's funny because in you know in the tagline of the website, it says for female songwriters. And that's something that I envisioned for a long time is that this would be an all female type of place that you know girls would come and they would feel safe. And they do for the most part, I think. No one's told me they don't feel safe, but like, I always assumed that women would just come based on the design and the content. Um, but we have like 60% female, 40% male mm -hmm. just readers and people inside the five and five. And I just, that's something I never thought, like I just never guessed that would happen. I thought men would be completely disinterested in a blog called Song Fancy, mm -hmm. but they're here and I'm not gonna like kick them out. You know, if they're enjoying the content and they're getting, inspiration they're getting inspired out of it they're writing more songs they're learning more about song craft they're feeling fulfilled they're getting joy like that's why that's eventually why song fancy got to where it is today because i want to i want to um instill that in people i want people to find the joy in songwriting especially if they've lost it so that was an area where it's like okay had the opportunity to maybe niche some more and boot men out of the group and the email list, but it just didn't make sense and it didn't really serve the overall mission of Song Fancy or what I feel like I'm trying to do through Song Fancy. As far as broadening, um, we get, we, I, and guest posters and stuff like that get a lot of comments and questions about like, how do I do this in the music industry? And that's where like, okay, well, I want to make sure that I can always talk about stuff that I know something about. So I try to share to the maximum of my knowledge. Um, but I don't go too far into like, okay, here's how to write a hit song. Like, I'm not gonna tell you how to get a number one or anything like that. I can't help you there. But also there are plenty of blogs who can. There are some amazing bloggers and hit songwriters that have that are Nashville based that have blogs that have resources on that. And I would hope that people continue to come to Song Fancy to get inspired so that they can write those songs and they don't burn out before they get a chance to ever get themselves that far if they're interested in doing it for a career. Yeah, I definitely want to talk about burnout, actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's interesting because uh, there's a, I guess there's a difference between having a very clear cohort, uh, clear uh, persona that you're going after um, and uh, and creating content that happens to be able to serve other audiences that you don't go after. And I feel like sometimes people who try and satisfy everybody, you know, you could very easily have had have turned song fancy into just a general how to uh, be creative group, um, uh, or or uh, you know increasing your personal brand group. Like you know, it could have, could have very much evolved into that direction. But the fact that you kept it niche still allowed you to serve more people who might not have fit into that mold, but they still got value out of it in, in other ways. And so I, I'm just always interested in, in to how um, 
how being in a niche does not mean that you're not having a, a wider impact. And I just think that that song fancy is a, like a really good example of that. Yeah. And that wasn't planned like to yeah. reiterate, like none of that was planned. It was just a byproduct of me trying something out and that got, that was the result. And it's, okay, cool. Let's run with it. Why not? And if, and if it was planned, it probably wouldn't have worked. Right. Oh, <laughs> So, so um, yeah, I would love to talk about 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 burnout a little bit, and and uh, and, and just challenge, and, and certainly um, uh, the the challenges that that members of your community face, um, maybe the challenges that you you've gone through. Um, to what degree is the nature of the business, the nature of the 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 persona that you're going after? To what degree is a lot of the um, the um, the community support rooted in like uh, just a lot of um, resilience building versus more practical how to. Definitely, I think it's evolved over time to become more resilience building focused, more mindset focused, more finding happiness, joy, not burning out. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of articles on song craft and that's where I started with the, when song fancy became more of, more of an educational blog. Like that's where I started basic song craft. I was learning in Nashville. Um, and since then it's definitely become more about mindset. I, when I sort of think about the persona that I'm writing for, you know, she's, she's a fictitious, you know, amalgamation of, of traits, et cetera, but she's also a little bit based on me mm. to eight years ago. Um, when I had first moved to town, it was my first handful of years here, what I was experiencing, thinking, feeling, and I try and write a little bit for her as well, because it can be a little shocking or a little bit of a culture shock when you decide to pursue music full time, especially if you move to like a music center and all of a sudden it's like, go, 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 you know, what can you do for me kind of thing. So it becomes really, really easy to lose sight of why you enjoy songwriting. And I've got plenty of friends who have come here, stayed for years, left because it's it just wasn't joyful anymore. So I try and include, honestly, these days, the majority of what I'm writing about is, is you know, your voice, your authentic voice and why it's worthwhile, why you have to, well, why you should write from your own authentic voice, um, how to find that, your message, um, how to keep your head above water, how to avoid burnout, the difference between good songs and bad songs, there aren't any, why you write. Um, and the five and five has reflected a lot of that lately too. It's like, just go for it. Just write the song, see what happens, see if you like it or not. And if you don't like it, it's okay, move on. You have plenty more songs inside of you. And you said that this is kind of based on you around eight years ago. So like what, what have been some of those challenges that you've had to face uh, that you've, um, I don't know, been able to work through in a way that that makes you wish that you maybe had this? Yeah, oh man, where do I start? Um, <laughs> one that I've written about before comes to mind. Um, I, I share this, I've only shared it in, in my email sequence. I guess this is no, I can share it here too. Um, I, my first like month, couple of months in town. I went to a song camp and it was so much fun. It was like a week long, just, you know, week long, five days of just all day songwriting sessions, um, mm -hmm. like learning from hit writers and publishers. And like, I got to meet people that I, I will probably like, who knows if I'll ever rub shoulders with them again. It was like the coolest ever. Um, and one of those sessions was a feedback sort of situation where, you know, it's a group of like 10 people, one hit writer and you get to play songs for this guy who's had success and hits on the radio and like is the kind of person that you aspire to be. And we get to one of my songs and I play it. Um, I was very proud of this song. I'm still proud of this song, but like at the time I was like, it's gonna be good. I'm gonna get good feedback. And um, first of all, first red flag alarm there is the fact that I wanted good feedback so badly we talk about stuff like that on song fancy and other people's um opinions and what's helpful and what's not helpful what's good criticism what's poor criticism what's hurtful etc um so we're playing my song and at the end of it he says something to the effect like he's quiet for a minute and then he says something to the effect of like well it was nice but like i don't care like i don't really care 
And, um, and I was like, what do you mean? And, you know, he continued to give his, his feedback. And one of the things that he said was like, you need to sing louder. And this was a professional recording. There it wasn't any issue in like the way it was mixed or levels or anything like that. He's like, you need to sing louder, meaning like you need to belt and be that singer that is boisterous and loud. Um, it literally took me years to get over that. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, his opinion is his opinion. That's fine. He's entitled to have it. That's cool. The way it sank in to me was not good. So that's the type of stuff that I try and help other people with, like not being me who is stuck like seven years in the mindset of like, I have to be louder for people to listen to me. I have to be louder to be good, to be accepted. Um, that's not the case, not the case at all. And now I make music that is as quiet or as loud as I want it to be. Mm, yeah, I, I mean, uh, in general, uh, like lots of people who start businesses or go off on their own or are building anything, you know, they suffer from imposter syndrome, but there's a whole nother level, or at least one can only assume a whole nother level when it comes to wanting to be a performer or wanting to actually write things for other people um, uh, in, in that way. It, 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 I, I can only imagine that that that, um, that, that resilience that, that, that you've learned through, through that process is one of the key differentiators as to whether or not someone will be able to uh, to survive um, in, in that world. Or just find a good pace and find joy, have some separation between writing for themselves and writing for somebody else. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I love talking about that. I love writing on that because I don't think we learn that enough just as mm. artists in general. Do you feel like you've had, do you feel like you've made that impact? I hope so. I don't know, maybe. Sometimes I throw things out, like I have posts where I just kind of go off on a topic. Like I just told you that story, I might write that out in the uh, in a Facebook or in the Facebook group and just share it with people because I feel like this is something that would help people there. And occasionally people would weigh in and be like, this was great, thank you for this. Um, but then I always wonder like, okay, I don't know, you know, it makes you wonder. I hope, I hope it's making an impact. But but it it I mean it's fantastic that you're 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 so aware of your own of your uh, of your own expectations as well. So even even objectively, you could say you know, Song Fancy is incredibly successful. There are some you know there's some amazing stories that are coming out of it. Um, but even then, you know, you're always kind of wanting to to make sure you're doing more and you're having a bigger impact, right? Definitely, and I think it comes from like, or at least for me, the way that I try and keep a finger on the pulse of that is to just interact. That's why having the community has been so, I mean, so amazing for me, even. It's just like the fact that I can put something out there, see the response, or ask questions, like ask direct, direct questions, like, what do you guys need, you know? Do you struggle with this? Do you want to see more of this, less of that kind of stuff? And they'll tell me, like, if they're looking for something in particular, they'll let me know, and then I can go write about that. You, you said earlier that you really love trying stuff out, and you're kind of obsessed with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Uh, uh, and and that that's usually it's a hallmark of of entrepreneurs the people who who, who feel that way, um, but but it also can be quite lonely, especially if those things that you're trying out aren't working. So I just would love to hear your thoughts about that as to whether or not you know does it does it get lonely sometimes? Um, what what motivates you to to move past something that you were really hoping would work but maybe just didn't. Yeah, that's such a good question. I When I saw that we were going to talk a little bit about loneliness, I had to sit with it for a minute and kind of, and I may still have to sit with it to really assess how I feel, but like, I don't get lonely as much as I just get discouraged. Mm -hmm. um, probably because I've had, you know, like nine to five graphic design jobs my entire adult life, you know, since college until up until recently. So I never really felt like I was not getting enough people interaction because I was at home working all day or anything like that. I'm blessed to have some other entrepreneur friends um, who are local as well as people who are, um, you know, just everywhere. Um, so loneliness wasn't really anything that's, that's hit me so much as it is just keeping myself encouraged and keeping myself motivated. Mm -hmm. A great reason to like, and go to your communities, go to your communities that are building because they will remind you like, oh, okay, here's where I'm having the impact. And here's how I can, if you're discouraged, here's how you can continue having some impact. Um, but yeah, loneliness, I may, who knows, 
I may make wake up in the middle of the night tonight and be like, oh yeah, that's loneliness. <laughs> to me, it feels more like just making sure I stay on like, okay, here's what's next. Um, I have a lot of lists. I do a lot of brain dumps. Mm. Um, I have friends that are very system systemized. System mm -hmm. system. Yeah. Systemize, yeah, and they'll they'll know exactly like okay, this is how I work the best. So they put you know this down in this order, and they use this tool for this use only. Mm -hmm. I kind of jump around from things to things. I still do pen and paper to do lists, um, but if I feel like there's a lot going on in here and I can't quite untangle it yet, I'll just allow myself to do a brain dump in a Google Doc. Or if I feel like oh okay, I need to make a spreadsheet about this because why? it'll help me organize my thoughts. Okay, cool. It's going into a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. um, I sort of allow myself the space to just throw down what needs to come out in order to move me past whatever hurdle it is that I may be stuck on or discouraged about. Well, that was a lovely segue into the kind of the, the other the, the kind of final question that I have. And, uh, well, just being a little bit nosy about the, the stuff that you use, the, the way that you work. So, I mean, you said you'll 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 brain dump sometimes. You'll you'll have systems, but you might move, you might switch from one to another. Are there certain tools aside from Google Docs and and uh, and spreadsheets that you do find yourself using uh, either to manage your community, manage yourself, manage your time, any of that kind of stuff? Yeah, I'm looking down at my my doc here. I mean, obviously the Adobe Creative Suite. Um, I'm a, I've been a graphic designer, maybe not obviously, but I've been a graphic designer, so I I really rely on that stuff. Um, if you don't have a uh, creative suite or don't have the access or the funds for it, Figma. Figma is amazing. Oh my God. Especially if you're working in Canva now, I would love to know like what Canva users think about Figma. Um, I haven't used Canva a whole lot because I found it a little bit limiting, but I feel like Figma is kind of like a go between like Canva and Photoshop. Figma is like the wonderful middle ground. It lets you do more than, than Canva might let you do. I don't know. I'd love to know. Um, but yeah, I keep all of like my quick and dirty graphics that need to be made just fast inside of Figma, um, because it's real easy to just whip them up, export them. Um, the like multiple artboard space I find is a lot less clunky than Photoshop. Um, I have a really powerful, fairly new laptop. And for whatever reason, Photoshop's artboards still like <laughs> just give my laptop a hard time. Um, but not with Figma, everything's sort of laid out right in front of you really nicely. Um, I'm also using Notion a lot these days, Notion. Yep, yeah, Notion's great. I'm obsessed. I, I'm not like a power user, but oh my God, it's- Do you use it just for notes or do you use like the database functions or? I might be using the database function. I'm not sure. I use like the different views, tables, stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like Kanban boards and, and statuses and stuff like that. Yes. And like you get to tag things and like put to do dates. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. Notion, <laughs> I'm not like a, um, a very like left brained organized type of person. I'm, I'm, if you can't tell, I'm a little all over the place. And I love that Notion allows you to just gesture down whatever you need in whatever format you need really fast. The keyboard shortcuts are great. Um, and it's all synced online. You can use it on your phone. I love it. I'm thinking of bringing my songwriting ideas over to it too. Um, but right now I just keep it mostly song fancy and like tasks that I need to do, like administrative stuff that I need to do mm -hmm. for my music or whatever. Um, and then Circle. Um, I just started using Circle. I'm launching a new membership community, a paid membership community. Mm -hmm on circle so that's been really fun to learn it's super oriented what's that song club yeah song club nice very yeah. cool yeah well, what, what what um how did that come about deciding to 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 start up a, a paid community like that yeah so um conceptually song club came to be because i wanted to create a follow-up for the five and five you know, the Five and Five Song Challenge, it's free, it's awesome. When it is running, people are engaged and they love it. And it's it brings me so much joy just to like see all these songs that are coming in and like people who are first time songwriters, like just showing something for the first time that they've never shown anybody their music before. 
it is such a good time. And then after five days, it's over. And it's like, okay, well, how can I, how can I continue to serve people after the five and five? Also in a way that, again, is sustainable for me. So a paid membership made a lot of sense. Um, it's basically going to be the five and five, but amped up a little bit more. We'll have weekly song prompts. So you always have something to help you generate ideas. Um, quick 15 minute exercise workshops where you can you know, get your exercise really fast. You can do it every day if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, as well as live writing sessions where I think it's gonna be twice a week, or I'm sorry, twice a month, where we all log in at the same time and we're working independently on our own songs, but we're together. There's a chat, people can get to know each other. And then of course, inside of the circle community, circles the, the platform that the community is gonna be run on. Um, you get to talk and comment and make friends and message people and stuff like that. So it's a lot more, um, it's just better for community building than a Facebook group, I think, anyway, so. Cool, very cool. Well, best of luck with it. Thank you. Um, well, thank you so much, Sarah, for, for joining us today. Um, uh, it's a fantastic conversation. I, I really enjoyed it, thank you. Thank you, thank you for such thoughtful questions and for like letting me get up here and just talk a mile a minute about songwriting and song fancy. No, it's it, it's been easy. Um, uh, so if, if anybody out there would like to connect with Sarah, uh, you can find her on Instagram at, uh, at Sarah Spencer Music, or uh, you can try your hand at Sarah's five and five songwriting challenge in her Facebook group. And that's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash five, the number five in number five song challenge. Uh, and then you can also find out more about song club at mysongclub.com. Uh, and to you, the listener or the viewer, uh, thank you very much for tuning into this episode of Authentic Work. Uh, wherever you are in the world, we hope that you're all staying safe and uh, see you next time. Thanks. <laughs>